Let's see. Uh, are we working? Bum, 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 bum. Uh, are we working? I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Is this live? I'm not sure if anybody, as per usual, can see me, hear me, give us a thumbs up so I know it's working. Ah, here we are. Let's just come up my end now. Marvellous. Let me get rid of that. Shove that over there out of the way. <clears throat> uh, good evening, all. Uh, let's get the correct screen up. Hang on a minute. Oh, too many things at once. There we go. Uh, good evening. Hope we've all had a jolly weekend. It's been absolutely roasting here in uh, Cambridgeshire, uh, which is very nice. You shouldn't moan about it because we get it so infrequently, don't we? But uh, yes, one thing or the other, and I've been stuck inside all day um, trying to get um, uh, on top of things for the past week or so. So, you know, responding to emails and getting these new machines listed, etc. Uh, evening, Andrew, Paul, Peter. I hope you're all well. Um, so yes so um on the machines front uh you will see these six machines with pictures they all actually finished tonight at midnight so if you've got offers in on those um you know make sure that's the offer you want tweak it if necessary um these other ones have all come in I haven't got into doing the proper photographs yet in the videos, which will be tomorrow's project. Um, I have put up quick snaps on our Instagram thing. Um, if you don't know how to find that, if you just go to under the category heading to latest news in the top news article, there isn't a link because I forgot to put one there. Ha 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 ha. Bonker. Let me find you a link. Just scroll down far enough. One of these days I'll get this organised. Instagram, here we are. Just scroll down until you find something that says Instagram. Click on that. Um, right, so hopefully I can probably show you on here, can I? Yeah, so we have Treasure Hunt Crane. What if I click on it? Does it come up bigger? Mm, sort of. What if I do that? Oh, yeah, hang on. We might be going to win it here. Uh, let's see if I can zoom this in. There we go, look at that, marvellous. Oh no, it's gone all the way, there we are. Uh, right, so we have a nice um, mutoscope crane with the overhead, uh, the seat operate crane with the overhead cams in it, all working, old penny. Uh, we have a Jubilee on sixpence twin jackpots. Again, all working, pays out. Um, it's had the lighting done, so it's got LED lights in it, low voltage, so that's good. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, Aristocrat Arcade, one of the early ones. Um, again, that's all working, pays out LED lights in it. Quite nice chrome on it. Um, we have a Marshall Shooting Gallery. That's on new 10p, I think, memory. Uh, all working again. It's quite good when you hit one target, the next target then pops up in a different window, so it's like a um, kind of like an animated back on it, which is quite nice, rather than the whole lot being reset at once. <clears throat> hit one, then the next one pops up, hit that, that goes down, the next one pops up, and so on. So I'll do a little video of that. There's always somebody who wants to ring me right at the wrong time, isn't it? Um, and we have a Brian's Gapwin, very, very nicely restored, been fully re chromed, um, cabinets all done, works perfectly. Proper Yale locks, keys, everything. So really, really nice one. That's on Old Penny. Um, we've got a hole in one on Nostalgic. That's virtually new. It's probably the best one there is of those, which you think. Uh, on 2P working, locks, keys, everything. Uh, really good condition for those of you who collect the Nostalgic machines. Uh, Kaylee Commercial, that's Old Penny, all works. 
Uh, could do with just stripping and polishing, really, because the case has been painted a horrible brown, sort of chocolatey brown at some point in its life. Um, so that's a nice little easy restoration project for somebody. Strip it down, give it a polish. That'll come up quite nicely, I think. Uh, another Mills High Top. Again, a really, really good one. All original Crackle, um, the Crackle Red Paint, Jackpot, Escalator. Yep, really nice oak sided one. Uh, aroma, an old penny aroma. Uh, evening Peter, Peter number two. Um, somebody told me the other day where who made them and I can't remember. So if anybody can remember or knows who made the aroma, let me know so I can put the manufacturer on it. That's um, you know Barrymac conversion, internally lit. This is all perspex front, so it kind of glows. So uh, yeah, quite a funky looking thing. Uh, old Penny, that one's on. Then we have a Duchess, Old Penny, and that's a Duchess, that's a Mark III Duchess. All working again, nice smart one. Locks, keys, everything. Uh, a duo mat, which somebody's been after for a while. That's all works, that's on new pennies, one P's. Just need locks, I think. Uh, hasn't got any locks on it. <coughs> Other than that, nice uh, bird's eye maple cabinet. And it's got the stripey veneers on the side of the cabinet as well, which you can't see in this little quick little snap. Um, obviously, you'll see when I do the video of it. It's going to be fun to video because there's a mirror front on it, so that will be uh, a challenge for me. Uh, Challenger, that's uh, old penny. That's all there, all working. Um, just needs restoring, stripping and polishing, basically. Um, I think it's got its the little back bit of the um, top casting where the coins go in is not there, which it, they're almost always missing. Um, and the, the corner of the cast has been broken and badly repaired with a nut and bolt at some time. So um, I think I've put in the description uh, somebody who's handy with a TIG welder could TIG weld that casting back together. And when Tommy polished it out and painted the background back in again, you'd never know it was been repaired so but it has got its bottom cash box door which are there often missing as well and all the columns have got the pins in them so you can often on these the n2 columns have the pins taken out so they don't hold the coins so yeah that should come up quite nicely actually um an aristocrat this is a console one very very nice really good chrome on it all lights up pays out as it should all the keys cash box internal cash box keys everything um, the four Nike is perfect on it. So really smart, clean one. That's on shilling, two plays, two pulls for a shilling. Uh, we have a Master Football, probably the nicest one of those I've ever seen. All been restored, lovely, good, clean backflash, nice and bright. All its original set of the, the coloured balls in it. And the card vendor. And there's two sets of repro cards with it, and then another set. Um, that have been laminated up so you can stick them on the wall behind it whatever to see what cards um, are in the machine so that's uh that's on um old penny keys locks uh the pretty shooter that's on old penny all working and it's got his cast iron feet it's got his shell shade um it's been a long time ago repainted, but repainted to the original design. So it's got the cats on the side. Uh, and it's, you know, it's kind of mellowed down again now. It's, uh, that actually looks really nice now. Uh, oh, I think we're back to where we were, weren't we? Yep, so there we are. So that lot is coming in the past week. Um, so if you're not on, don't follow our Instagram thing, then just go to Instagram, search for colcon.uk. You'll find us, follow us there. Um, and you'll see I just put quick snaps up before I've had time to uh, do the photograph properly. So say tomorrow I'll get the photographs um, up of all of that lot. Um, they have, if you click on them, they have got sort of descriptions on them. I've done, done that much. Sizes, what coin run and whatnot. So you can, uh, you know, if you're feeling brave without seeing a proper photograph or a video, stick an offer in already. 
on those. Um, so these six machines finished tonight. Um, and I think the last of the spares we've got at the moment, I think these all finish, are these all 18th of July? Yeah, these all finish tonight as well. So if you need any of these spares, uh, some artworks, Mills jackpot, etc. Get your offers in on those. <clears throat> Uh, right, what else have I done this week? Not a lot, I've been mad busy with the tele job. This is just completely bonkers. I've been in sort of 20 odd hour days trying to get paint to dry at two o'clock in the morning on props that have, I then have to stick on the truck at four o'clock in the morning to get to the Cotswolds by, and on set by eight o'clock in the morning, etc., etc. So it's been really, really, really crazy week. But hopefully this coming week is not quite so bad, I think, um, I think I'm due back Wednesday or Thursday, so hopefully if I've got Monday or Tuesday off I can catch up, get these photographs and videos done. Um, there's a few bits and bobs to post out to people, uh, some spare parts etc, which I'll get done tomorrow. Um, and then hopefully start some of these other jobs like the wants, spare parts wants people are desperate for, they keep asking me for. Uh, finish off the fairground section and so on and so on because um, there's quite a few fairground signs and bits and bobs start to pile up in the yard here that people have been dropping off and I've also got to figure out why the price results some of the price results are not showing so that's another little job so Tuesday night because last week I was too busy to do the um, results video thing that you all quite like um, I think last week there was only two machines finished and a load of spare parts so this Tuesday I will do those results together with these six machines and the other spare parts that are finishing so we'll do a, a, a run through of all that lot this Tuesday night <clears throat> and then Friday night I don't think I'm working Friday so we should be able to do Friday nights um, uh, new stuff video as we've, as we've done before um, by which time all of these things will have the videos up. Um, so, you know, any questions on any of that lot, we'll do that on Friday night. When you've all had a chance to look at the pictures and the videos and um, I think of what other information you need on any of that lot. So that's where we're up to at the moment. Um, what else have I got to tell you? Not a lot really. As I say, I've been busy, busy with other stuff this week. So I haven't really done a great deal. Um... So there we are. Uh, any questions of anybody? Questions, comments, etc. How many people have we prized away from their barbecue? And it tells me there's 26 people not having their barbecue, so that's not bad going. Uh, don't forget, give us a thumbs up under the video because that helps uh, to find new people, supposedly, out in YouTube land. And hopefully over time, if we can find new collectors, that's more people to sell your stuff to when you come to sell stuff. And more people, obviously, potentially with stuff to, um, uh, you know, to bring in and sell. Um, so over in the other section, the advertising section and the books, I haven't had time to do to put any more on, to be quite frank. Um, advertising, there is, there's two collections of signs going to come in at some point in the very near future. Uh, of enamel signs. <clears throat> Um, so quite nice stuff, I think. And books, there's still hundreds of books here to sort out. So uh, there's a big collection of circus books to come in as well at some point. Um, and then I've got, um, I think I mentioned last time, to, to go and look at, as soon as I can find a day to go and look at it, a whole load of stuff, sort of a man cave full of stuff. Um, <clears throat> let me see what I did with the pictures I had. It says, where are they? On here somewhere. Uh, and there's all sorts of stuff. Um, ranging from some interesting architectural stuff, some smart deco kind of light fittings there, shop cabinets, enamel signs, um, pub signs, pub mirrors. Uh, oops. Um, sort of old bicycles, weighing scales, clocks. 
more pub signs, vintage like um, audio stuff, radios, etc. Um, that sort of what's that more in old signs? Don't know what they are in the background there. Oh, some jukeboxes I can see. Um, big model ships, and fairground rides, um, you like toy set toys, you know, like little traction engines and cars and things that go on a toy set. Some nice gothic stuff, which we'll perhaps put in the auction horrors when they crank that up again. Um, more shop fittings, lighting, all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff. Interesting sort of bygone stuff, basically a big whole barn full of stuff. There's a nice tandem bike there, I can see. So I've got to go look at all that lot. Um, it's also got a whole load of classic cars, which would be interesting. Um, so we might try a few classic cars and see how we get on with those. So I know some of the uh, slightly collectors, and I know some fairground collectors who also collect classic cars. So, um, you know, might be worth a try, see what happens. Obviously, it means building a few more sections of website to put it all on. But um, yeah, once I've been to see it, I'll take some photographs and I'll perhaps just put a separate page up on the website of, you know, coming soon with some photographs so you can have a rough idea of, of what's going to be there. Um, we might actually not probably start selling that until end of summer, I guess. Uh, but it's an interesting, interesting big batch of stuff. Ah, uh, Puma Bash says, hi, my first attempt to use the video chat. Well, there we are, it's working, so good evening to you. Chat away amongst yourselves. Uh, any questions anybody's got, please ask, or comments, etc. Ideas, all the usual sort of stuff that we need to know. Uh, stick them in the comments and I can respond to them there, and or somebody else can. Um... Somebody the other week was on about the um, the bimbo boxes holding the mini baby bimbo boxes. I managed to find a picture earlier today which I uploaded. Uh, what did I do with it? Latest images. If you go on to coin up latest images, here is a bimbo baby box, which is quite sweet. I'm sure Mr. Williamson will be tracking one of those down to stick in his arcade along with a, with a full size one. I think it's only about two foot wide, quite a dinky one. I think it's supposed to be on legs. I don't think it's missing his legs on that photograph. <clears throat> if anyone's got one of those, I've never seen one in the flesh. I'd be interested to, to know if anyone's got one. I know there's a couple in Holland, but I don't know of any over here in the UK. So uh, let me know. Uh, I've also been gathering up um, well, starting to sort through my sort of art, what I call archive stuff, so old photographs and um, catalogues and um, you know images of machines on site and all that sort of stuff. But eventually when I have nothing better to do, ha ha, um, sit down and start uploading all that lot. But um, that won't be for a few months yet, I suspect. That'll probably be a winter job. Um, so how are we doing over in the wanted section? Um, mm, 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 latest wanted. Let's have a look. What do people want still? Snap, dippy duck, time limit. Uh, anything new on the wants? Which will be at the top here. White City. Geomat. So whoever wants a Geomat, we've now got one. Challenger, we've now got one. So hopefully this is now sort of kind of starting to work, i.e. people are taking note of what people are wanting to buy and uh, starting to send it in to sell. So that's good. If we don't have the wanted bit works, either find it under help, help with buying, it'll be under there. Um, or basically, let's say you want to buy a um, Mutoscope. There we are. 
So you want a biometriscope. So you can either search by type or search by maker. So if we do a search by type. So a mutoscope is a type of viewer. We come to viewers. Go to mutoscopes. And that when the internet wakes up. Has my internet just died? Oh no, there we are. Um, these are different mutoscopes we've got listed at the minute. So let's say for argument you want a round tin mutoscope. Go to the mutoscope page. Click the button here on the right, the place I wanted to add. And then you just stick in there the kind of money you'd be prepared to pay. It doesn't commit you to paying that much. It just gives the potential seller an idea of what kind of level of interest there is in the market, if you like. So if you're prepared to pay £1,200, put in £1,200. Click on the place I wanted. And you'll see the button lights up in green because you've now got an offer on it. If we go over to the latest wanted page, <clears throat> you'll see now that wanted ad appears there. And it also will come up on, in your account page under wanted ads. So this is just the, the test account I use. So it's here and then you can edit that. Anytime you want to edit anything, just click on the green buttons. And you'll see you're currently offering to pay around £1,200. So if you decide that perhaps you'll pay a bit more, 1500 type in 1500 and that changes it everywhere across the site. If you buy one somewhere else, decide you don't want one anymore or whatever, you want to get rid of that ad, just type zero in for the amount, you click edit and it disappears. It, it, it stays here, obviously grayed out here. Um, if you refresh this page, it will be gone altogether. That's just in case you accidentally do the wrong one or something. So you can, it stays there until you put a thousand pounds in again. And it kind of reactivates it. If you change it to zero, it's gone. If I refresh this page, it's gone altogether. So that's how the wanted ad works. And the idea is hopefully, as is now starting to um, happen, people check out the uh, wanted page, see what people are wanting to buy, how much they're prepared to pay, and think, oh yeah, I'll sell my one of those. They send it into us, we list it, and then you make your offer accordingly. So say that the the um, price you make for your wanted advert doesn't commit you to pay that price necessarily. You can, when the item comes in, you put whatever price you're prepared to pay, because obviously you don't know what condition it's going to be in. So take, for example, the mutoscope. It might be a really nice restored one comes in for sale. It might be a basket case restoration project. It may or may not have a reel and so on and so on. So, um, you know, pitch your price up. Um, I'd, I'd suggest you know for a, a, a good example and if a really fantastic one comes in you can make your offer a bit higher if it needs some restoration work you make your offer a bit lower so uh, there we are that's how that works uh, right let's have a look at the comments Fumi Bash says I'm not a collector just a guy who's interested I have two machines I think I want to get rid of I bought one at Gaiden Auction many years ago oh gosh it was a long time ago over there are both in need of a lot of TLC. No problem, send me a message uh, through the website or email, uh, which is mail at I'll put uh, the email in here. Um, if you want to send some pictures for the moment, we have to do it via um, email. Elephantnouseauctions.com. Oh. Always puts a gap in the email for some reason on these comments. I don't know why, but anyway, yeah, send me a message through, um, and we'll sort out getting them here. Um, I'm sometimes I'm here in Cambridge, sometimes I'm in Leamington. I'm backwards and forwards between the two once or twice a week, so you can drop off at either, um, you know, a mutually convenient time, and then we'll take it from there. Uh, machines advertise look restored. Can you confirm you're happy to advertise projects? Yes, very happy to advertise projects. People are desperate for projects because during the lockdown, everyone's done all their projects. So um, project machines at the moment are much in demand. I think you'll do quite well, actually. Um, they do generally because machines generally come from collectors and generally speaking, collectors like to restore their machines. That's why generally speaking, most machines that turn up are restored. There's usually... Um, 
the uninstalled machines usually if they come from source out of an arcade storage or a showman's yard or something then generally speaking in those cases they're unrestored so I say this lot we've currently got in um, the the ones I've listed today we haven't got the photographs yet the Challenger needs restoration although it's all complete and working but it you know needs stripping and varnishing and polishing up um, and the what was the other one? I don't know what it was. Oh, the Kaylee Commercial. Again, they don't need a lot of work. They just need sort of need just cleaning up, stripping, and polishing, really. But yes, projects most welcome. Uh, Peter says, "Is the White City Bandit wanted not as common as the Screen Stars?" Um, I don't know, suppose they do turn up quite so often, do they? Um, let's have a look. Here, I mean, we've sold it's a reasonable gauge. Um, if we search by make, if we go to Bolands, have I got under T for Tom Boland? That's another job to rearrange this index at some time. Tom Boland, yep, here we are. Um, so, if we go to all their machines, um, mm, 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 mm. So the various screen stars, we sold three of that version, four of that one, two of that one, three of that one, one of that one, one of that, whatever that one was, we haven't got a photograph of. And I've only sold one white city. I don't seem to have got any prices to the greyhound one. Which kind of is the White City, really, isn't it? I think that's probably the same thing, just called something else. So it would appear that the White City slash Greyhound race was much rarer than the film stars, yeah. Just on what we've sold over the past 15 years or so. Uh, I've got an auction price, but not a picture. Why is that? Oh, that's why. Image gallery, why isn't that showing up? Oh, let's do that. Have a little deep, put a thumbnail picture on there. Yeah, so it's quite interesting. And they let's see, they've made quite a few different versions of the screen stars One, two, three, four, five, and the film stars, which I think is called film stars because that's the this one, the curvy kind of the curvy wooden one, not the white city. So, six versions of it. Yeah, I guess if you think logically, the screen stars they could keep reinventing it every year or two with the latest film stars of the day. It's probably probably quite a popular thing. Whereas greyhounds or horses or cars, and you know, they don't kind of they do change, but you know what I mean. It's yeah, names of dogs. So what kind of thing? But you can quite see that on a film stars, if the latest film stars, the latest big hit film that year or whatever. Um, I don't know the exact dates of any of these, I've just, sort of just guessed at all of them from um, just from what knowledge we could find, but it'd be interesting to find out which, uh, you know, the dates of the different models. Again, if anybody knows that kind of information, please let me know and I'll add it onto the website. Uh, Chris says, nice chat, brother. Thank you very much, Chris. I was just that's a fair play totalizer that has engine heads on, doesn't it? Two engine heads on. And they did see the governor, the kind of the all cast case with one engine head on. Hmm. That case is like four star screen stars. The same case is all all like one big aluminium casting. Uh, 
yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, right, any more questions of anybody? Let's say this lot, Tuesday night we'll do the price results of the stuff finishing tonight and the stuff that finished last Sunday, as I didn't have time to do a price video last week. So we'll do that Tuesday night, and then Friday night we'll do a proper run through of all the new stuff that's been listed. Um, because I hope to get all these all uh, photographed and video tomorrow. Might be a bit tight for time, but uh, I'll get as much as I can done tomorrow anyway. Um, then it gives you a chance to have a look and a think um, before Friday. And then we'll do our little live uh, question thing. If anybody's got any questions about any of them, need to know any more details, etc. Uh, then I can uh, get the information sorted out and added onto the site uh, accordingly. My tea's gone cold again. I need something to keep my tea hot. Uh, right, anything else? Anybody need to know anything? Then do stick a comment down below. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, do subscribe. If you're wondering why you can't work the chat thing, I think you have to be subscribed to do the chat. So if it isn't coming up for you, that's probably why. So underneath the video here, I'm not, is it this side or this side? Should be underneath me, as it, where, where I appear on the screen. There'll be a subscribe button. Uh, click that. Uh, and then there's a little like, bell icon for notifications. If you click all notifications, I think it is, then it uh, lets you know when I've uploaded a new video or when there's going to be a new um, live stream next. So it's a useful little thing to do for you. Um, any more for any more? If not, we might have an early night. That means I can catch up with some sleep. I've not had much this past week. Busy building props. Oh, I didn't kill anybody with a sword illusion I built for, um, for Ted Robbins, so that's good. He survived. Yep, the sword box came back without any blood stains on it, so that's always a good sign. So, uh, yeah, well done me on that one. So that was a good build, and then we did, um, yeah, knobbly knees contest blocks and all sorts of silly things. A uh, couple of people have asked again about um, you know proper auctions again in the future. Uh, what the prospects of doing that? And the answer to that is I still don't know. Um, we're supposed to be getting the so-called Freedom Day tomorrow, aren't we? Unless it's been cancelled again, and I've not heard, which wouldn't surprise me in the least. Uh, Rumour has it we'll be back in lockdown again September the twenty-seventh. I think people are saying, aren't they? Because they're going to you know once they once all the MPs have had their summer holidays. With all their freedoms, they'll have another lockdown again. It's all seemed to be in the pipeline, so we'll see what happens on that score. Um, hopefully it won't happen, of course. But, um, yeah, it's just, you know, we're not clear of all that whole COVID thing um, by a long way yet to make decisions like that, because the problem is if we um, you know, arrange an auction, which takes a hell of a lot of setting up. I can't find a new auctioneer apart from anything else. Um, find the space to do it, get all the stuff in, and then, you know, it all gets locked down again, or regional lockdowns or whatever there's going to be. Um, we're stuffed, and you're stuffed if you put stuff in, and so on and so on and so on. So we'll carry on with this. This seems to be working. People are getting the hang of it. Um, and just go from there. What's nice now is it's a bit easier now at the moment of people coming to visit and drop stuff off and collect things. You know, we don't have to be quite so strict at trying to book in one at a time and all that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, 
I seem to be working okay at the moment. Uh, Richard said, evening, Steve, how do I access money in my account or do you have to send it? I have to send it. So uh, if you have sold something, as you probably uh, on the top of your menu bar here, this one is lit up £10 in red because this my test account is in debt, as it were. Um, if it's in green, that means you've, you've got money, you've sold something. So, yes, just um, get hold of me and um, give us your bank details. And um, I'll do a bank transfer for you. Or if you want to collect cash, you can do that. Um, I can't actually send you a cheque because I don't give cheque books on bank accounts anymore unless you really pester them for them and they charge you a fortune for cheques. So, but, you know, bank transfers are instant these days pretty much. So that's the best way. <clears throat> or if you're buying anything, um, you can put it towards that or, or use it and, you know, send you the change, whatever you want to do. Um, so just let me know. Uh, Susan Robertson says, good evening. Do you get any older kiddie rides anymore? Occasionally, yeah, we don't tend to get many. Um, but you do get them. Uh, like the Edwin Hall ones. Um, what have we sold lately? Let's have a look. Search by type. Um, what have I got them under? Kitty rides. Hmm. I might be under service machines as a general thing. Here we are. Yeah, kitty rides. So if you can't find them, that's where they come. Service machines, kitty rides, which is like things that aren't quite vending machines and aren't quite um, amusement machines. Uh, right, so kid rides, let's see what we've got under there. So these are the ones we've sold in the past. Remember that rocket, that made a lot of money. That went to America, that one, 2,700. <clears throat> There's a collector in America that has 50 or 60 different rocket rides. And he completely restores them like better than they were when they were new. Um, that's cost an absolute fortune. Um, I can't remember the chap's name now, but uh, yeah, so that one went all the way over to America. It's a lovely thing. Um, Buffalo Mules we've had a few of over the years. I don't know how many are on these price results, but. Oh, none of these answer that one. Well, we're not getting Muffin Mules, so a few of those. Uh, so, yes, we do get them. I missed it on the Edwin Hall rocket a few years ago. Yeah, it was a lovely, lovely thing. Um, and that one... That rocket, that went up to Norfolk, I think that one went, if I remember rightly. I might be tempted to sell my rocket. I have, I've got a rocket. I should sell a few things, really. <clears throat> I've got an elephant, of course, but I'm not selling that. Uh, stay in the elephant house where it belongs. And, um, yeah. Yeah, stick a, want, stick a wanted ad in. Let's see what turns up. If there's a if there's a ride you know if there's a kiddie ride you're looking for and we haven't got a page for it yet then just send a message through um, and I'll make the page for it. So if you're looking for a I don't know well even even a muffin the mule I mentioned earlier the muffin the mule was not here even though we sold a few of them which is odd um, then I'll make the muffin the mule ride page and you can stick your wanted ad on um, from there. Please, well, if you do want to sell your rocket, I might be tempted. Might be tempted. I need to sell some things to pay for a new elephant house roof. Those of you who know the elephant house, now I did the the front half of it, the two-story portion. Ooh, four years ago now, is it? I suppose it must be. I nearly sliced my hand off with an angle grinder. Um. 
I've got to do the main, the bit that was kind of used as the main auction hall. That roof has all got to come off and be redone, which is a lot of money. It's a big roof. Uh, so, yeah. I should probably have to sell a few things to pay for some new uh, timber and some new slates, I expect, for that. So watch this space, as I say. Somewhere I've got, I have to find, I've got a, um, a lovely Edward Hall Kiddie Ride catalogue, all colour illustrations in <clears throat> from the 50s. It's got the rocket in, um, it's got the Muffiny Mules in, and various other things, giraffes, I think. It's about, I don't know, 10 or so in the little catalogue. I must find that, then I'll scan the images and upload them onto the website. There. Uh, yes, don't forget these six machines all finished tonight at midnight. So make sure you've got your best offer in for any of those you want to buy. And these spare parts. Oh, yeah, excuse me. Um, we'll finish at midnight as well. And then we'll hopefully find some more bits to put on uh, next week. Um, there was a collector who was going to bring some bits, a machine and some parts, hopefully in the next week or so. I'm not sure what. Um, I've got four bandit mechanisms here to do. The only reason I haven't put them on, I was going to video them rather than I need to alter this page of the website because at the moment this will only take static images. Um, and because the mechanisms need a bit of work, some of them have got bits missing rather than try to photograph them and then write a list of the bits that they need. I thought I'll put them on the turntable, do a video, um, and then you can see for yourselves if you want a bandit mechanism, how much work they need, what bits they've got or haven't got. Andrew says, watching you tonight, I have just worked out the search function at last. Ah, good. That's good. If I've made it difficult, then tell me, send me a message and find out, um, you know, why you couldn't get it to work, as it were. Um, so like I said, right at the start of this project, it was, it was all very well me. I had people test the website, um, spent hours testing it right at the very start before it went live to the public. <clears throat> Because all very well me building it, I spent months building it, and I know exactly how it works and how it's supposed to work. But when you let people loose at it who've never seen it before, and it's different from anything else, it does take some getting used to it and some finding things. And what I think is obvious isn't always obvious to other people, because it's only obvious to me because I've been working on it for several months, of course. But you, you know, starting from scratch, being faced with it, look at it. What do I do with this? Um, but yeah, you can search by type or search by maker. Uh, and if you haven't noticed, on the search by maker, which some people are not aware of, for some reason, when I the drop down menus don't show on the YouTube screen, which is really annoying. Um, so click B in the first box, the next one comes up with all the makers beginning with B. So what you can't see on YouTube is all this list of makers. But anyway, I'll click on Brian's. That's what we usually use because we all know Brian's machines. Then the last box then pops up with all their different machines they made. So although you can see my little arrow scrolling up and down, I can see the list. <clears throat> and it doesn't show on YouTube for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but right at the bottom of the list of the manufacturer's machines is a show all their machines link. 
So it goes A to Z for all the machines, and then the very last selection is show all their machines. So if you click that one, for example, on Brian's, comes up with all the different Brian's machines. So if you know a maker, search by the maker. If you don't know who made a machine, but you know roughly what sort of type it is, then use the other search, use the search by type. And hopefully that's split down into a category so you can find everything uh, pretty easily. It was a really difficult thing to do because of course there's so many different machines. Um, and trying to squeeze it all down into menus that aren't too long, so it's um, you know quick to get to anywhere, is, is a difficult thing to do. But hopefully it makes sense. So you know if you're looking for a, a particular all win, but you don't know who made it. So an all win is a wall machine, so go down to the wall machines. Then it's all win type as opposed to a catcher type or a coin drop type or whatever. So, it, so it's an all win. Um, I don't know, let's say it's an all win that um, um so I'm trying to think of an obscure all win that we might have on there. Whatever, anyway, go to all win. And that shows all the different all wins that we've got listed. <coughs> so you can scroll through all that lot and hopefully you'll spot the one you're looking for. As you scroll down, blah, blah, blah. And then it will come to you all of a sudden. You go, ah, yeah, that's the one I want. Yeah, the one with the clown on. Click on that, and there you are. The one you're looking for is a pillwin, etc. And the other sections there is not much in them work pretty much in the same way. So on the advertising art, for example, you search by the type of thing. It might be a, a advertising clock, an enamel sign, a neon sign, etc., or a mirror or you search rather than by maker as such, you search by brand on advertising because advertising is all about brands, of course. So again, if we're looking for Coca-Cola stuff, so it's a brand beginning with C, go down there to Coca-Cola. So we've got four types of things at the moment for Coca-Cola. So we've got Coca-Cola neons, illuminated signs, mirrors and clocks. Uh, so under illuminated signs, Click on that. Will be the different illuminated signs we've sold. And so on and so on. Books. Books and printed stuff. So books goes by subject or by author. And the subjects at the moment being circus, coin up, fairground, magic other, etc. So for example, on the circus. Uh, circus is a subject, then the type of things under that. Then we've got books, periodicals, i.e. Uh, newspapers, magazines, and then we've got posters. And the fairground art is what I'm still thinking about how to do. I haven't done it yet because, because with a lot of fairground art, we don't know who the artist was. We don't know what the ride the thing come off of. Because um, it is often just a panel or a ticket or a sign or something or, you know, a galloper horse or a dodging car or whatever. <clears throat> so it's actually a really tricky thing to try and catalogue in a uh, a meaningful way that you can narrow down very quickly. So that will probably be a, um, you know, a bit of a challenge. It will probably develop over time, I expect. And as we then do the other categories, uh, the stuff we used to sell in the past, things like uh, vintage toys, automobilia. Um, Again, each section will probably, the search functions will just work in a slightly different way, uh, just because of the kind of thing it is that's being sold. Uh, Peter says, has there been as good as ever interest so far with bids coming in? Uh, yes, I think there has so far. Um, these six machines have finished tonight. I know they've all got multiple offers on. I don't know what they all are offhand. Um, just because I don't pull the information out 
of the um, database. And I think probably all the spare parts have as well, last time I looked. All the stuff selling tonight. I think these had all got... I'm not sure if all the all the paper stuff had got offers on or not, but I think they probably had. But usually the offers come in within the last hour, even though they sit there for three weeks. So that's another thing we're going to look at. I did mention last week of, of um, whether they had to reduce the time, the viewing time. So obviously when I originally set this up, it was in the depths of lockdowns and it was really difficult for people to come and view and we have to book them in at separate time slots if they really want to come and view and so on and so on. Um, so I set it so there'll always be three weekends because that's when most people can come and view. Um, but what most people are saying is with the videos, with the 360 degree videos, and with the good photographs and descriptions, people just don't really need to come and view stuff. They can see what they need to see without spending 30 or 40 quid on petrol um, <clears throat> so we could perhaps reduce that to two weeks or even a week um, what I'm thinking of doing is giving the sellers the option of how long they want to list stuff for um, because again a couple of people have, have given some feedback that um, um, you know if they want to sell something quickly because they want to buy something else then three weeks is a bit of a long time to wait um, which is fair comment. So uh, I've got a splinter on my hand. Courtesy of the BBC. Um, yeah, so rather than me dictate, oh, now you have to list it for three weeks or two weeks or one weeks, we'll perhaps give uh, you know the seller the option. Then they can, if they're not in a hurry to sell, they can leave it three weeks in the hope of um, you know getting the best possible offer. If they need to sell something quickly, then stick it on for just stick on for the week, whatever. I tend to think the longer it's on, I think it's probably a fine balance. You don't want it so long that people just get bored and forget about it. <clears throat> but equally, especially perhaps if it's something more expensive, if there is two or three weeks, it gives people the chance perhaps to think that they'll sell something they own to part finance what they want to buy next, um, or raid the piggy bank, or send the wife out on the street or whatever they want to do, you know, to raise a few quid. Let's be extremely sexist about it. Why not? It'll upset a few people. Excellent. So, uh, you know, that's the thing. We've given them that bit more of time. They have got more chance to, to, to raise the money, especially for something that's expensive, that's likely to make four figures. Um, so it probably is a good idea. But bits, I mean, a, a plus particularly with like the, you know, just spare parts of machines, where you either need a part or you don't. You either need a spring for your machine or you don't need a spring, so they could easily be, be just a week probably. So we'll, we'll look at that and see how it goes. Uh, Elaine says, oh, I assume that's Roger, says hi from Norfolk. Good evening, Roger and Elaine. Hope you're well. Uh, Peter says, great podcast over and out. Good night. I haven't eaten all the cake yet. I've still got some left, tell Shirley. So that's good. Uh, those of you who are selling any of this stuff tonight, uh, these six machines and the spare parts, um, for any of you who are first time sellers, which I think some of you will be. Oh dear, excuse me. In fact, I know some of you will be. Uh, if you want to stay up till midnight, um, what will happen at the stroke of midnight, these things will disappear from the sales page. So the offers are fixed, can't be altered. Lemon cake next time. Lovely. Yes, I like a bit of lemon cake. Um, so then after midnight, if you go log into your account under account, um, under your sales page, I don't think there's any on this, this is my test account. Um, the things will move from the live tab where they are at the moment because they're live and accepting offers. And they'll appear under the wonderfully titled Cogitate page for you to cogitate, i.e. make a decision. So under here there'll be a little the little thumbnail picture and it will say the highest offer we've received for your 
<clears throat> whatever your one arm band is 500 pounds let's say and then two buttons accept and reject uh, you can't click them instantly it's like a safety switch device so next to the button and they look kind of look like these buttons they, they're kind of um, faded um, is a little um, circle a separate little circle button you have to click so you click the button next to the accept or the one next to the reject depending which one it is the button will then light up or go a, a, a much brighter color then you can click it and the the whole purpose of that is if you're using a smartphone or a tablet or something and you're swiping it's very easy sometimes to accidentally hit a button um, and you know I didn't want you to accidentally hit either accept or reject when you hadn't you know either hadn't made your mind up because you were scrolling up or down if you were selling several things at once or just you know while you're scrolling hit the wrong one because once you've hit it that's it decisions made and and everything happens automatically from there on in so that just makes sure you can't accidentally hit the wrong one so if you're wondering why you can't click them that's why click the little dot next to the button it lights up it does say that, um, with the little arrows click to activate then you can hit the button but once you've hit either accept or reject that page will reload and it will disappear off that page so you know it's been accepted or rejected it will then appear under either sold or unsold um, the buyer then gets a message to say well done you've won this item please send us the money they send us the money we give them the goods um, your account gets credited so your uh, your top money your top bar here um, will light up in green with the amount that you've sold and equally if you bought something it lights up in red to say you owe some money so all that happens automatically um, we do ask you make the decision within 24 hours please um, so people aren't hanging about um, if you've made an offer and it's not accepted or you weren't the highest offer you'll get a message through to say your offer was rejected um, just so you know where you are so just keep an eye out over the next 24 hours or so if you're made an offer on any of those things <clears throat> and if you're the seller that's what to do i'll stay up again till gone midnight i usually sort of half past 12 so if you are selling uh, and you have any problems or any questions you can get hold of me just send a message through the website or give me a ring even if you've got my number um that message will do i'll keep i keep tabs on it after midnight just to make sure everything's working honky dory there's not been any problem so far um other than people getting the hang of the safety switch thing as i call it um apart from that it's all worked perfectly smoothly so that's really good Uh, Elaine says, hopefully Roger will sort out and get up to date with the 2021 tech. Hopefully, yes. Tend to get himself a new computer or a laptop or something. Yeah, I think, he's, I think his touchscreen is a bit dodgy, so he was having trouble getting the buttons to light up. Um, he sold uh, a couple of some spares, I think it was last week, wasn't it? So, uh, yeah, if you have any problems, just get hold of me. But hopefully it will all work fine for everybody. <clears throat> and then yeah as I say if you've sold stuff um, either let me have your bank details so I can do a bank transfer once I've got the money from the buyer or if you want cash you want to collect cash let me know and you can do um, I can put you cash in the post or just not for cost of sending it uh, registered delivery or recorded or whatever they call it these days um, or if you're buying something or going to be buying something in the near future if you want to just leave it as a credit on your account you can do um, and then you can contour it off whatever you're going to buy so you know if you sell a machine for 500 pound and you're perhaps also buying one at 400 pound obviously you you just have 100 pound change as it were we'll send you or vice versa you might need to top up if you're buying something more expensive than the than you've sold so just save sending money backwards and forwards more than is necessary which all just incurs bank charges all the time but why do we want to give the banks the money when we can have it in our own banks let's go back to there let's just scroll down there these ones finishing tonight 
Um, any more from anybody? I think people are starting to drift off. So if you've got any more questions, do let me know. Um, otherwise, I will go and have a cup of tea in a minute and something to eat. And do a bit of a tidying up because the place is a tip from the week because I've been busy, busy, busy. And um, as I say, I will be around till after midnight just in case there's any issues tonight. tonight. But there shouldn't be. Then tomorrow's job is to get these machines, these uh, 15 new machines, all photographed and videoed. Tuesday night we'll do a results show, as people like to call it. Um, of everything that's finished tonight and also the stuff that finished last Sunday because I didn't have time to do one last week. Um, and then Friday night we'll do a uh, video chat about all these new machines. Um, in case there's any questions or you need any more details about any of them. Uh, collections deliveries this week. Um, I am not sure what days I'm out working yet. I'm waiting to hear. Um, I think there's a bit on Father Brown this week, so I might be out a couple of days. So if you want to come to Cambridge, you probably can do early part of the week. And probably later the part of the week, I'll be over in Leamington. But I'm not sure at the moment. Next weekend, I'll be in, here in, back in Cambridge again all weekend um, for viewing any of this new lot. Um, so you're more than welcome to come next weekend and have a look at all this lot. And obviously bring anything you want to sell, pick up any bits you've bought. Um, any small bits, again, tonight, any of the spare parts, if you want them posted, uh, that's not a problem, I'll wrap them up and post them to you. Um, but I don't want to send machines out, as I said before, because uh, carriers just don't look after them. Um, so it's up to you to make your own arrangements for carriers if you, if you absolutely have to send them on a carrier. Uh, right, any more for any more? I think people are drifting off, so we'll give it another few minutes. If there's no more questions or comments from anybody, then I'll call it a night and go and do some work. And um, we'll catch up later in the week. And good luck to anybody tonight if you've got offers on these um, machines and bits and bobs. And of course, even better luck if you're the sellers that you um, hope you get good prices. I should do, they're all nice machines, so hopefully they'll all do well. Uh, what's the time? It's um, eight minutes past. I'll give it till ooh, 10 minutes. I'll give it another couple of minutes till 10 past. If there's no more questions or comments, then I'll call it a night then, because there's always a bit of a delay on here of how many people are watching, I think, so it tells me there's still now 16 people still watching, but there probably isn't, I was just, oh, there's probably only six or something, so people are drifting off, <clears throat> probably because they're bored of me, which is fair enough. So be quick, tappity tappity wait if you want to say anything. Uh, give a thumbs up if you haven't done it already. Uh, David says, another hour gone quick again. Yes, goes quickly, doesn't it? Yep. Uh, goodbye. We'll see you uh, Tuesday, I hope. Catch up on Tuesday, see how things have done. And then they're going to... Friday with the new stuff. So if you haven't worked, if you're new here and haven't worked out how come other people can make comments new you can't, you need to be, I think you have to be subscribed to the channel. So underneath me, as it were, on the, on the screen, underneath the box is a subscribe button. Subscribe to the channel. Um, then you'll be able to join in with the live chat on here. And also, um, 
when you subscribe, there's like a little bell icon next to it if you're not very familiar with YouTube. And if you click on the bell, um, uh, there's a thing to click to get all the notifications. What that does, whenever we upload a new video, like if I've done a, a video of machines or something, or if there's going to be a live stream coming up, <clears throat> it just sends you a notification so you don't miss it, basically. So that's quite a good idea. Uh, Rogers Random just asked how much the parts made. Which parts? There's parts finishing tonight. Uh, these parts all finished tonight. Um, other parts that sold. I haven't done a results page yet for parts. Um, but Tuesday night, when we do the Tuesday night results video, um, that'll all be in that because the ones that finished last weekend will all be in and this weekend will all be in this coming Tuesday night. So I'm sorry that sounds like I muddle up, doesn't it? So anything that finished last Sunday, because I was busy this week, I didn't have time to do the results show, as we call it. So last week's stuff and this week's stuff, all the prices will do this coming Tuesday night at five past eight as usual. And if I get time to do a bit more work to the website, I will do a uh, results page for all the parts. So, yeah, that's the answer to that one, Roger, or for Roger. Coming soon. And we need more bits, so tell Rogers to get out in the shed and clean some bits up and get them down to me. Any more for any more. Another minute or so. Uh, yeah, people are dropping off. Roger, he's going to get a phone, that's a good idea. Yeah, he needs to get himself organised. You have to send him one of those evening classes to uh, how to do the internet or something. Not only that, it would get him out of your way for the evening, won't it? So, you know, not a bad idea. Not borrowing yours, no, good idea. You'll break, only break it. Screw it with WD-40 or something. Something bigger than the phone's better, though, really. A tablet or, you know, a little cheapy tablet. This is a really... I've had this one years. It was a... Tesco one, it was like 80 quid or something. Just because a bigger screen is easier to use. Or even a cheapy little laptop, you can get a laptop for 100 odd quid. Uh, not a lot of money these days. Especially if you go to one like um, the um, C, uh, what's the shop? CEX, isn't it? Uh, one of those sort of shops. You get a, a, a recon one. <laughs> uh, yes, quite. It, it hasn't shown that comment because it's a rude word, isn't it? I think YouTube has um, detected your s slightly rude word and uh, decided not to... Um, I can see the comment, but I don't think anybody else can. Mm -hmm. But yes, a good job, I agree. Uh, right, I think that's it. People are drifting off, so I am going to call it a night at a quarter past, which is one minute to go. Good luck, everyone, for tonight, if you're buying and selling. 
Uh, any problems after midnight, I'll be around to about half past 12. So just send a message and I will check the messages. Uh, gone midnight. And we will see you all Tuesday night, five past eight, for the results uh, show, as they say. Um, so we'll go through the prices of everything that was sold last week and this week. And uh, chew all that over. Uh, and have a, a chat and a moan at how much things made or didn't make or whatever. Um, and go from there. So that's it. Over and out. Good night. I'm going to have a cup of tea. See you later.